Hey everybody, this is round one of my playthrough of the Black Fang Dungeon scenario. This is the final scenario in the Perils of the Lost Coast adventure. I've gotten through Brigand Doom and the Poison Pill. This is the Black Fang Dungeon. Let's read about it. Something the local farmers have, ta have taken to calling Black Fang has been, calling, has been killing livestock around Sandpoint. Those who have tracked the beast to its lair found a cave connecting to mysterious ancient ruins. Delve into Bla Black Fang's lair and into the evils there before they threaten Sandpoint. I would say that they are already threatening Sandpoint, actually. Uh, so this is... Oh, and during this scenario, when any character encounters an ancient skeleton henchman, and there's a henchman in three, of, three out of these four decks, uh, each... Other character at that location must summon and encounter an ancient skeleton henchman. Okay, well, that's just one more reason to keep the party split. And of course, there's already been a great reason to keep the party split, and that is because Harsk has a ranger skill where as long as he's not at your location, he can give you a d4 as long as he recharges a card. So no reason to ever combine the party in this particular uh, configuration. I have whittled down their character decks so that they are compliant with their, char their, their card listings. Um, there's been a couple of different modifications. Of course, there's a card in there from uh, Skulls and Shackles, which I, I just like playing with some Skulls and Shackles cards, so I do that because I'm allowed to because it's my game. And there's Kira. What about her? Oh, yeah, and she's got the Sahedrin Medallion. So she's actually got one more card in her deck than she should. I considered about dropping a blessing out of her deck, but I kind of felt like that wasn't necessary. Because she's a cleric, and why not? Just give her a, a boost. Uh, g give her one extra card in her deck. Actually, they both have an extra card in their deck, because they both got to draw a random weapon at the end of the last adventure. And while I think you are supposed to probably exclude that weapon once you rebuild your deck, that's just not how I've been playing it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if it's too easy, maybe I'll, I'll up it. But I, I felt pretty good about the previous session. In terms of rules, I'm playing a little bit, of fa a little bit fast and loose this time around. Rise of the Rune Lords, I tried to adhere a lot more to the rules. Except that one deviation where I was using Skull and Shackle. But I mean, that almost killed me, so it was okay. So these locations, uh, some of these we've seen before. Shrine of Lamash 2 was in the Rise of the Rune Lords. Throne Room was in Rise of the Rune Lords. I, I don't remember Desecrated Vault or Temple. So we'll see what happens. And of course, I mean, even though we've seen the locations, the cards have been randomized. So I don't know what's in any of these decks specifically. Where do we want to start? Well, we're splitting the party. So I'm just kind of feeling like... I want to send Harsk to the throne room and Kira to the temple. No particular reason, it's just how I'm feeling right now. I like to start with a tank, and Harsk, I guess, is kind of a tank. Is he really a tank? I mean, he's really not. But I've started with Harsk every other time, so I guess that's what I'm going to start with this time. Harsk. One, two, three, four, five. Amulet of Life, Blessing of the Gods, Glaive, Black Cloth Armor, and Shalelu, Shalelu and Asana. So uh, this is an okay beginning weapon, uh, beginning deck. He does have a weapon, which his his class. His favored card type is a weapon, so his initial hand has to have a weapon in it. Well, it does. So that's okay. It's not a ranged weapon, and that's a little bit of a issue for me. He does probably better with ranged. Not only because he has a bonus to his ranged, but also because he's got Shalelu and Asana, who can get recharged to add a d4. But I think early game, it'll be okay for him to fight melee for a little while because this is a really good melee card. It's a 1d10 plus his melee. And his melee is a d6. So he'll be rolling a d10 and a d6. Not too bad. Throne room. This is a, a gross place. 
Hung with black and red striped fire pelt skins, dog pelts, and horse hides, the walls of this savage, reeking room also sport impaled hands. The throne is adorned with a variety of cracked skulls. At this location, at the start of your turn, you may recharge an item to draw a card. Recharge an item, it says. Specifically an item card, I guess. Does he have items? Well, he does have an item. He has the amulet of life. But I, th I think I, I think I'm happy with his starting hand, to be honest. So I, I don't believe I'll be using this ability, but we'll find out. Okay, so he's going to explore. He encounters an item. This is an intelligence check. His intelligence is a d6. He needs a d6 to get this potion. He rolls a 3. He does not get the potion. I think I'll just let that be his turn, or should I should I spend a blessing? Yeah, let's spend a blessing. It just feels early game. I'm just too nervous about the timer to to pass up an opportunity. Ooh, a weapon. This could be cool. This is a melee weapon. This could actually maybe no. This is better for him because Kira isn't pro pr proficient with weapons so she would have a hard time using this can he get this though let's find out he's got a strength die of a d6 and that requires a d8 to acquire nope cannot get that no way not possible okay so i mean not a terrible start not a great start it's just a start taking over a timer card sending kira over to this temple I don't, I don't feel like I've been here before. Old but still impressive, a temple rises from the undergrowth, its ancient stones pocked by time and weather. Numerous narrow windows peer into its darkened interior. When you move or are moved here, discard a card. Any player at another location may evade an encounter and move here, discarding two cards instead of a normal one, then reset her hand and end her turn. And this location gets closed automatically. Okay. So this is rough. Um, so she's going to have to discard a card just to go there. Which uh, feels like a pretty high price. Um, and I also don't feel like... Okay, Blessing. So her, her hand is, is good to start. Blessing, Blessing. So she's got a couple of Blessings here. Um, I guess I'm going to expend a blessing, cause, or, or rather, yeah, discard a, a blessing. So th that's her price for getting into the temple. And now she'll explore. It's a blessing. Uh, so her wisdom divine is a plus two at a d12. Eight, nine, ten. That beats a five, so she's just gained a blessing. Okay, that's good. So she got in for free. She got into the temple for free, essentially, if we if we think of it that way. I'm just going to look up her. Yeah, divine plus two, d12. Yeah, okay, just making sure. So, again, early game here. So I kind of feel like the, the blessing of Lamash too, as, as evil as it may be, you can bury it to add two dice to a check to defeat a monster. So I don't know what kind of monsters are in this deck, so I'm going to hang on to that, but I am going to discard a Blessing of the Gods so that she can explore again, and she encounters a Long Spear. Can she use this thing? Is it even worth hoping for this? Yes, she can. So this would be a good acquisition for her, and she can roll her Strength and Melee. She's got a plus two to her strength melee roll. I think it's strength melee. Yeah, it's strength melee. And she's got a d6 skill die for that. And she rolled a 2. So she did not get the spear. It's too bad. She was one away. Just one away. Okay, that's it. Timer card, Harsk. Let's explore Harsk. Actually, I forgot at the end of Harsk's turn. Okay, I am going to put a die... A, a, a token, whatever this is called, a bead, um, on his card in in hopes 
of somehow... No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a token on the blessing die. So that when I go to turn over a blessing card, I'll remember that at the end of his turn, he can scry. So, again, he would have scryed at the end of his other turn. He would have learned that there's a ghost lurking around the area. But I don't think that would have changed what he could possibly do, because... He doesn't have magic, Harsk. Not really. I mean, not, not for attacks. So he's going to have to encounter this ghost, and then the ghost is going to have to just go away. Yeah. So no matter what happens in this battle, the ghost is going to come back later. And it's too expensive, I think, right now, to have Kira come down and fight this ghost. So, because, I mean, she's there. She's at the temple. She's got to stay there or else she has to discard a card. And that's not worth it, I don't think. Although she's a cleric, she can get cards out of her discard pile eventually. So, his option, Harsk's option, is, a is to fight this guy with melee, because that's, that's what he has. Um which is a d6 and then he can reveal his glaive for an extra d10 now he is also wearing his black cloth armor he is the only character in his location so he may reveal this card to add one to his combat check so he does get a free 1, so now he's just trying for an 11 across a d6 and a d10. d6 rolls a 4, and the 10 rolls a 10. So that's 14, 15 to defeat this ghost, which sounds great, except that the ghost doesn't die. Um, so, because the ghost, it would have had to have been a magical attack, and... Uh, no, yeah, a magical attack. And the ghost, of course, I mean, Harsk isn't dealing magical damage. So the ghost is still there, and it's going to be there, and it's going to keep being there until a cleric comes down and consecrates this place. And that's not going to happen, because to move to the temple, it costs two car uh, a card, and to leave it and then to go back would, uh, you know, so it's just not worth it. Harsk's turn is over. He gets to scry, or uh, what I call scry. It's really just looking at the top of the deck, but Magic the Gathering calls it scry. And it's going to be a pit trap. I feel like he's more or less well-equipped for this. His dex is a d8. His wisdom... What is his wisdom these days? Wisdom perception is... Oh, a d6 plus 2. I forgot about that. Okay, cool. So maybe that that's what we'll do. We'll see. So thank you, Blue Bead, for reminding me to have him scry. And now it's Ki Kira's turn. Is she... She did not draw up to five yet. She should have done that at the end of her previous turn. Sanctuary. Discard this card to choose a character at your location to evade a monster. Put that monster on top of the location deck. That's cool. So that's... That's an... Uh, evasion spell oh what's guidance i swapped out some of her spells obviously which i was able to do because they were basic spells so as i understood it uh between games you're you, you rebuild their character decks and as i understand it you're allowed to swap out spells as long as they're basic or or any card as long as it's basic or if you acquired it from some other thing then you can always use it as well so I, th I believe those are the rules. Um, so Guidance, discard the card to add one to a check. Okay, that's cool. It's always good. Uh, let's do the exploration step. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh dear. Okay. Hmm. That's not great. I mean, it is great. No, no, it's not great. It is in no way great, actually. Um, well, actually, you know what? Okay, it's kind of great. 
Harsk is here at another location, so he can lock this location down, meaning that Black Fang will only be able to uh, will will only be able to run to either Shrine of Lamash Two or Desecrated Vault. So we will know the two places that Black Fang has to be, whether we beat him right now or not. So I guess that is a good thing. Okay, so. The villain has appeared. That means that Harsk is allowed to make a closing the location check at his current location. Succeed at a charisma, oh dear, or diplomacy check. Harsk. The dwarven ranger who has made it, he forgot to draw up to his hand at the end of his turn, who has made it his life's goal to, to not be around people is now expected to do a d Charisma or Diplomacy 6. Um, there's no way he can do that because his Charisma is a d4 and he has nothing to give him a bonus. So he fails. So we have... Uh, that's bad. Because now we have three open locations. We don't know where Black Fang is going to go. And, and we still have to fight him. Before the encounter... Succeed at a constitution or fortitude 7 check, or take acid damage. Fortitude, uh, so Kira's fortitude is a d6 plus 3. So she has a plus 3 bonus to get this constitution fortitude 7 on a, what did I just say? d6. Yeah, d6. 2, of course. So she rolls a 5 total, so she takes damage. How much damage? Well, she only rolls a 2, but she's not rolling. Black Fang is, and that's 3 minus 1, which is 2, actually. Uh, so 2 points of acid damage. So she gets to just... Hmm. Actually, you know what she could do? This is kind of amazing. Yeah, this could be amazing. Discard this card to choose a character at your location to evade a monster. Well, this isn't a monster, it's a villain. Yeah, it's a villain. Dragon. It has no mention of monster on here, so that doesn't work. Okay, that's too bad. So she does have to take two points of damage. And, you know, and even I think the Blessing of Lamash 2... Bury this card to add two die to a check to defeat a monster. It's not a monster. I mean, it appears in the monster manual. It's a black dragon, but it's not a monster or the bestiary in, in Pathfinder. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess we're gonna, you know, strangely kind of funny. Um, the sanctuary spell, which as far as I can tell, does not work against Black Fang, uh, appears to be depicting Black Fang, or at least a Black Dragon, as the foe upon whom the spell is being cast. That's kind of funny. But I, I've got to I've gotta go by the card, and this does not say that it is a monster. This says it's a villain dragon. So I have to assume Sanctuary cannot work on this, on this particular card. So what else do I want to get rid of? I mean, I could... Instead, discard the Sahedron Medallion to reduce that damage. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that. I mean, it's only two points of damage, and I'm spending something that could could protect me from four. But I think it might be worth it under the circumstances. So she's going to discard this, and I'm really hoping that she's going to come through for me and make that divine check. The divine her divine skill is a d12 plus 2. So she has a plus 2 bonus to make a divine 9. That's pretty high. Let's just try it anyway. 3. Okay, so she does get to discard this. That's fine cuz one of her skills, just naturally from being a 
cleric is that she is able to rescue cards from her discard pile. But she did protect herself from all that acid damage. So that's good. She doesn't have to discard now. Okay, so this is Black Fang. He's the villain. What's he up to? 12. He's a 12 creature. Under normal circumstances, I don't feel like that would be a big deal. But she has no weapons <laughs> at all. Um, so really, I think the best course of action in this case is going to be maybe using the guidance to give her a plus one on her attack and then just go go for it. Um, so that's what we'll do. So once again, she's going to attempt a divine four check to not have to discard this and to be able to recharge it instead. So I'm going to roll her divine. She's got a plus two for her divine and a seven on the die. So she does get to just recharge this, which is better than discarding. And that gives her a plus one bonus. Now that plus one bonus is in addition to her plus two bonus for her just general melee. So she's got a plus three total against this dragon. 12 dragon. Well, 9 dragon if you take that into account. Harsk can recharge a card. So he'll recharge his short bow to contribute a d4 to Kira's combat. Kira's strength die is a d6. So all told, she's got a d6 and a d4 to 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 roll a nine because ten eleven twelve so nine three not a terrible start so now she's got to roll a six on the d6 three maybe she misunderstood me i wasn't asking for a six total i was asking for a six on the d6 so she does not succeed and she does take three points of damage and that's okay because I kind of, I'm okay with that. Now, I could have expended a blessing, for instance, to add another die to her check, but I honestly didn't feel like it was worth it. Wait a minute, I, I forgot a rule. I forgot a rule. What I forgot is that if you, if you defeat a villain, you don't, you don't get... It, it it takes blessings. It adds blessings to your environment. And so I actually should have spent a blessing to give her a boost to, to, to defeat that villain, just so that that villain doesn't do what he's about to do, which is take three... Wait, one, two, three. Yep, three cards from the timer deck. Oh, it doesn't matter. Add Add the villain to that deck... And then we distribute these cards um, between all of the open locations. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four. So we are no better off than we were originally. Uh, we are basically just sort of starting the game over. We just have no... We have no idea where the villain is. It could be in any deck. We don't know. We have learned nothing, and we have spent... We have lost three cards out of our timer deck. So that was not a great start at all. <laughs> that was a bad start of this game. But you know what? Sometimes that's how it happens. And, and not remembering uh, to, to spend a blessing to defeat a villain to keep from my timer deck from being accosted was a really bad call as well. And it could be the call that costs me this, this scenario. It, I, could, I could very well not, not beat this scenario because of that, that mis mistake. So there's three cards there. She's going to draw back up to five. And I see that she's got a weapon, 
So this is a that that's the weapon she got for for winning the previous scenario. That's cool. And it's Harsk's turn now. So we'll we'll switch over to him next time. Thanks for watching.